we're back inside the Magic Hive for the Beathon 3. And when I say magic, I mean magic. This is the honeycomb structure. You'll see this image all day long. And to the honeybee, okay. it is their city. It's one of the most fascinating structures in the world as well. The man who decoded the dance language of honeybees was Carl von Frisch. Back in the 1960s, he wrote, the life of a honeybee is like a magic well. The more you draw from it, the more there is to draw from. And the honeycomb is only one of the amazing parts. Now, of course, you know they store their nectar to create honey inside the comb, but they also put pollen as well. Every creature needs protein and sugars to live, and that's where they store it for the, the baby bees. They also rear their brood inside, so it becomes a nursery, and it is their internet. It's the communication device inside the hive. They vibrate signals to one another in total darkness. This is how the honeybee connects with other members of its hive, and the beeathon is how we connect with other members of the tribe. And as you know, uh, it's a delight to be speaking to people, to different members of the tribe all around the United States, well, really all across the globe. Because as I've said a bunch of times, the people who have an interest, not just in honeybees, but all the pollinators, all the beautiful creatures of the microcosm, live on all corners of the globe, all walks of life. And I'm delighted to be having on the Beathon a guest all the way from, from the other side of the world, straight for Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I'm pleased to have on Ila Gibbeschuber, who is a European physics professor in Vienna, Austria, currently working in Malaysia. The inspiration for his work in biomimetics comes from rainforest expeditions that she does with her PhD students from fields as diverse as veterinary sciences, economy, fine arts, engineering, physics, and biology. And we're delighted to have her on today because she has recently created an engineering program, a software program, that is a GPS system that patterned on the navigation system and the biological habits of honeybees. So we're delighted to have on the Beathon Professor Ila Gebeshiber. Welcome to the Beathon, Ila. Hi, Evan. I'm very glad to talk to you about our GPS inspired by honeybees. It's marvelous, and I was delighted that you contacted me through the internet as well. You saw me post about the Beathon on Facebook, and you responded and sent me your information, so I was delighted to connect you that way. Now, your background is in physics, and now you're a big fan of the microcosm. Tell me how that, micro the connection began. Well, you know, uh, I studied engineering physics for my diploma, for my bachelor, for my master's, and for my PhD. And then I went to California as a postdoc to University of California, California Santa Barbara. And there, for the first time in my life, I, as a physicist, as a microscopist, came into contact with plants, with animals, and started to think about the physics of plants and the physics of animals and how we could use them in our engineering applications. Now, in fact, you basically came into biomimetics through a combination of passion and inspiration, but it all had to do with the engineering, really. What was it about the engineering of the honeybee that caught your attention? Well, you know, we thought there are so cool senses which we people have. We can see, we can hear, we can feel touch. And then we started to look at the senses of other animals. We found out that there are some animals which have a magnetic sense. There are some animals which have an electrical sense. And there are some animals which have a navigational certainly, sense, certainly. like the honeybees. You know, the honeybees, they are foraging around, they're flying there and there and back and forward. <laughs> And then they are finding some food, and then they are flying straight back to their hives, and they are telling their bee friends with their waggle dance how much food, how far away they can find. And so we were really thrilled that these bees have this navigational sense that they can find home. And we thought it would be just perfect if we could give such a navigational sense also to people. And so we started to look at the biology of the honeybee. We started to look at the engineering mm -hmm. concepts the whole life which we could learn from sure. the honeybee. Sure. And then we transferred all these principles and constructed a prototype, a concept prototype, 
which we are now miniaturizing to make it really, really small wow. so that we could give it, for example, to kids who are lost, to people who are lost, and that they, like a real sense in their body, can find a way home. <laughs> So this is, in fact, like a traditional navigational compass, only it's going to be in a smartphone application. Is that the case? It's going to be a one square millimeter small thing, which you might wear on the top of your head, <laughs> and which helps you to find back home. I and see. You know, yeah. So it's actually going to be a microchip? It's actually going to be a microchip, yes. Marvelous. And we were so fascinated by this because it's a system which would help people to find their home, you know, in cases where the GPS is not functional or the GPS might be switched off because of some technical problems. And it could also, of course, be a parallel system. You know, sometimes it's not good. The GPS um, connection is not good if you, are, if you are driving with your car under a bridge or things like this. So it would be a complementary system. And so we were really, really delighted to, you know, expand the human senses by one more sense, by this navigational sense. So, Ela, you have suggested that we can learn more from these honeybees, their magnificent navigation, uh, and all of their physics and engineering, their optimized engineering computers inside their brains, that doesn't just have to do with navigation or aeronautics or flying around. You've suggested that dancing honeybees might actually help us build less noisy automobiles. Could you explain that for our guest today? Yes, you know, bees are magical, magical creatures. You know, if you're a mechanical engineering student, you have to learn all this theory about vibrations, about mechanical stability, about noise, about how to fight noise, and all these things. And it's big and it's complicated and it's tedious. If you look at bees and how they manage noise, it's just fabulous and Absolutely. fascinating. You know, when the bees are doing their bevel dance, they are telling their friends how far away the food is and how much Excellent food Excellent point. Is. Excellent point. And so they are doing their vegel dance on the honeycomb, on the wax honeycomb structure. And now most beekeepers do not have the time to let the bees build their honeycombs by themselves, but they provide them frames, wooden frames, already filled mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the honeycomb. Now the problem is, if the bees are dancing on this tightly filled frame, the vibrations are very, very small. And since they are communicating via the vibrations with their peers about the food source, the language is not loud enough. So they try to make their voice louder. And they are making their voice louder by eating away parts of the honeycomb which connects the honeycomb pattern to the frame so that we have just very, very few connections to the frame so that the inside honeycomb can vibrate really a lot when they are dancing so that the message to the other bees is really clear. Yes. Yes. And now when we were thinking about how to build a less noisy aircraft and less noisy cars, we came up with the idea we could, you know, fit our structures which should direct the noise away with this honeycomb which completely fills the frames. So learning from the bees, if the frames are not completely filled, you have a lot of vibration which is good for the bees but not good in the cars. We learn how to manage the noise in the aircraft and in the cars. We have an open house and you know, we have guests from all over the world. We have architects from London, we have school children from Austria coming, I have some guests from the United States, and they're living in our house. And, you know, they are all the time together, so they can discuss science, they can live their curiosity, and then we go together on rainforest expeditions. And especially, you know, since we have the virgin rainforest right next to our house, we have all these amazing insects coming to our flowers. Very and, nice. You know, Can't wait they to are visit. sitting in the garden, <laughs> they are looking at the bees, they are looking at the moths, they are looking at the butterflies, and 
their mind in the beginning, it's just beauty which they are seeing. But the more and more I tell them what we can learn from these creatures, the more they appreciate them, not just because of their beauty, but also because of their inspirational potential for ways of doing engineering and of doing science.